When we started the company in 2010, if we said natural language processing or artificial intelligence, people would have rapidly lost interest. And I think that landscape has really changed recently. I think people are becoming a lot more aware of the potential of both types of technology and are a lot more accepting of it. Additionally, I think things have become a lot more multilingual, and I think language has become more important. I think when uh, companies are working with feedback, they want to be working with the feedback in the native language, and business is becoming a lot more global. So Luminoso is a voice of the customer company. We take feedback from a wide variety of different sources and help companies turn that into actionable insights that make their products and services better. Companies can use Luminoso to really figure out what their customers are saying uh, in something like a contact center or in uh, customer feedback that comes in in a wide variety of different forms. By really being able to read between the lines, you can really understand a lot more about what customers are saying, uh, how this stuff works, and you know the various insights that customers have. It can help you figure out what from your products um, you'd be able to fix to get the most impact to your KPIs. It can help you understand what's changing across different regions or across different customer bases. I think the one interesting thing about social media is that uh, people really use interesting and creative language on it uh, because they're looking to go viral, they're looking to be very popular. So we see emoji, we see slang, we see uh, things, memes change and, and word meanings change in an instant and it needs to be really able to adapt to the different ways that people talk and how quickly those change. So I think it really allows them to be able to put data behind some of the decisions that they're making. Often when people are looking at all of this qualitative information they get in, either from surveys or uh, being able to process other sorts of marketing information, it's really important for them to be able to take this and use it with the same kind of weight they would use uh, numeric data. Additionally, it's really important for scaling. Uh, if you're looking at uh, the amount of data that comes into your average consumer electronics call center, there's just enormous amounts of it. And it's this huge untapped wealth of information for these companies that normally they wouldn't be able to grab without the linguistic processing that they would need to be able to understand what's being said in all those calls. Gartner says by 20, 17 about most of the profitable companies will be doing real-time analytics on the feedback and information that they get uh, and many of them haven't even started today and uh, getting from maybe looking at your data once a quarter a couple times a quarter to being able to look at it near instantaneous is a process that companies need to begin now. Open data is incredibly relevant. We also run uh, the ConceptNet project, which is the largest uh, open knowledge graph project right now. It, it aims to encapsulate information about what people think, uh, how objects relate to each other, and people's goals and feelings in a large network that can be used for both deep learning um, and regular machine learning. In it's available for everybody to use. I think besides Start Now, one of the things that is a real low-hanging fruit for a lot of companies is this internal data that they have that they're sitting on. Uh, there's so much information in there. Many people don't read what happens in the other bucket. Many people don't read what happens beyond the number in their NPS score. And I think if we start there, you can find a lot of value very quickly. I think it's particularly exciting that since we came from almost the open source community, we started out with a fully functional Japanese solution as well as an English solution. And it's really changed the way we've had to design the system and we've had to work with the languages that we were, you know, working in multiple languages from day one. And I think that's really opened up the way the languages play off each other and it's made our system more accurate from day one. I think one of the things that really highlights uh, the power of language is we were working with a large Japanese car company and uh, you know they get in information both from dealerships and from customers and they use that to sort of better understand what's going wrong in, in many of their vehicles and into the other bucket which is often where the really interesting stuff lands uh, there was a whole bunch of different people talking about smells. And they were talking about how maybe it smelled like their dog had been in the car when their dog hadn't been in the car. It smelled a little musty, like an attic, things like that. And the, the system was able to figure out there's a cohesive pattern here and it might be tied to the people who are talking a lot about 
condensation. So it turns out in this particular vehicle, the hose between the air conditioning and the rest of the car had come a, come a, had come a little undone in some of the vehicles, and it was causing condensation to leak in the car, which was causing a musty odor. And so that was probably one of the most interesting fix uh, notifications the dealerships were getting uh, from that particular thing.